Let's kill. Let's go. Oh my god, this is beautiful. This is beautiful, baby. Oh, this is beautiful, baby! <laughs> Hello, everyone! I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I will show you how you can create the most effective and completely broken Relanas Twin Blades build. This amazing weapon is currently the favorite light razor of nearly every Elden Ring player due to its fantastic moveset and spectacular unique skill. However, I have observed a lot of players and content creators building this weapon without the proper optimization, but I don't blame them at all. I mean, look at the stupid scale values of this weapon. It scales C with every how can someone be sure of what to level up in order to make it truly powerful? But after thoroughly testing this weapon in multiple scenarios, I found that there are two ways of making it a complete monster. This is very important for you if you are planning to take this weapon into the latest part of the DLC, where the enemies are even more complicated to deal with. After playing a few hours with the Relana's Twin Blades, I can tell you that it quickly became one of my favorite Elden Ring weapons too. First of all, I'm going to talk about the main features of the weapon, I will explain the details of the build, then we will test it against the most difficult bosses of the base game and I will show you the easy strategy to obtain this weapon as fast as possible. Finally, at the end of this video I will show you the true potential of this weapon against a very powerful Shadow of the Air 3 boss fight. So without anything further to say, let's jump straight into it. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Ok guys, what we have here today is the first light grace or build of the channel and what a fantastic weapon is featuring this one guys. The Relana's Twin Blades is a very similar weapon to the backhand blades, cause you will obtain only one weapon, but once you two-handed you will obtain another one for free. That unlocks a destructive power stance moveset that works with the R1 attacks, which is a lot better than the regular power stance moveset that works when wielding two weapons of the same type in both hands. What I like the most of this new moveset is the insane speed of certain combos when using specific attacks. The first one being the jump attack followed by a light attack, then the roll attack followed by a light attack. With these two combos we are dealing multiple hits in such a small amount of time, making of this weapon a perfect option to use with the successive attacks buffs. But definitely my favorite part of this new weapon is the incredible and extraordinary unique skill Moon and Fire Stance. This skill works very similar to the Sword of Night and Flame. If you hold the stance and then you follow up with a light attack, you will unlock the magic part of the weapon. The magic attack of this skill can be followed up 3 times with light attack. 1, 2, and 3. This attack is very useful against groups of enemies or targets that are weak to magic damage. And if we hold the stance and then we follow up with a heavy attack, we will unlock this fantastic firestorm, baby! Which is obviously my favorite attack of this weapon. Despite of how this attack looks, it is way more effective in bosses than against groups of enemies. I believe that it depends mostly on your playstyle, but the cool part is that we have both attacks available and we can choose the one that we like the most. And those are the main features of this weapon, guys. It has an incredible moveset, a fantastic unique skill, and is very very easy to use as well. Now that we know each detail of this weapon, let's go to the equipment and the stats. We are going to be using the Relana's Twin Blade Sun Plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast or main buffs. And if you wish, as a secondary weapon, you can use the Sword of Night and Flame on Plus 10. Now the main problem when building this weapon are the scale values. As you can see, this weapon scales C basically with everything, which makes very difficult to decide which stat to prioritize when using this weapon. And that will depend a lot on which type of damage we want to deal mostly. So in another shell I can tell you that the stats we choose are going to affect dramatically the performance of this weapon. You know that you can use any armor set you like, but I am wearing the Relana's armor set that in the same way that the Relana's Twin Blades can only be obtained after defeating this boss. And I am using the commoner's headband on its altered version merely for aesthetical reasons, but if you want, you can use the Relana's helm perfectly fine. The most effective talismans we can choose for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Rodent Winds of Insignia, and depending on which type of damage we want to prioritize, we will have to choose between the Fire Scorpion Charm or the magic scorpion charm, but if we wish to go neutral, we can use the dragon crest gray shield talisman. In our flask of wondrous physic, we will have to do more or less the same. We are going to use the stone barrel crack tier, and depending on which type of damage we want to prioritize, we will have to decide between the flame shrouding crack tier or the magic shrouding crack tier. Anyways, if you don't care about the stance damage, you can replace the stone barrel crack tier with the thorny crack tier. It's a very good option as well. And believe me when I tell you that this weapon devours stamina, so be sure to craft some picket turtle legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. In order 
to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we need 50 on vigor, 25 on mind and 40 on endurance. To be able to use the weapon, we need a minimum of 13 points on strength and 16 on dexterity. And if you remember at the start of the video, I told you guys that there were two ways to make this weapon a complete monster. And the first one, which is my personal favorite, is to use 56 on intelligence and 70 on faith. This way, you will have a balance between high performance and versatility, because you will be able to use perfectly fine both parts of the skill. The fire part and the magic version of the skill as well. And the other way to make this weapon broken is to sacrifice its versatility, which is something that I do not recommend. However, if you want to do it, this will be achieved by prioritizing one stat over the others, which means that if you truly love the fire attack and you don't care about the magic part of the weapon, you can level up intelligence only enough to be able to use the weapon and push fate all the way up to 99. The same principle applies if you love the magic part of the weapon and you don't care about the fire attack. But as I said before, I don't really like this strategy because you are sacrificing a very important part of this weapon which is the versatility and if we go back to the scale values of this weapon everything scales on C so not a single stat is worth to be pushed all the way up to 99 so as a person that likes to get the most out of each weapon I strongly recommend you to use the build that I am using right now and I am using my Skadu Tree Blessing on the level 9 but you can push it all the way up to 20 to have the most optimal defense and attack values when playing the DLC now that we have completed and optimized our build what do you say if we test the limits of this weapon Okay guys, to buff our character with this build, we are going to use Golden Bow first, then our Pickle Turtleneck, which is completely optional of course, then our Body Buff, which in this case is going to be Hollow Shabriri, but you can use Flame Grand New Strength, perfectly fine. Now to hand our weapon, refill the FP, use the Flask of Wondrous Physic, and you are ready to go. So let's show her who's boss. Come on. We go crazy guys. On the skill. Back down, Melania. The skill. Let's go. Come on, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go, baby! Oh my god! <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Here we go. Let's go, baby! Give it to me! Give it to me! Come on. Let's do this. Make it happen. Nah! We got this still, bro. Come on. Let's go, baby! <laughs> we got hit, guys, but... Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Let's go crazy, baby. Let's go crazy, baby. Let's go crazy, baby. Come on. Let's go crazy, baby. We crit hit. Let's get this done, baby. Come You're on. going crazy, guys. Let's go. Oh, that's real damage right there, baby. Oh my god, this is beautiful. This is beautiful, baby. Oh, this is beautiful, baby! <laughs> okay, guys, now I am going to show you how you can easily defeat Renala so you can obtain this weapon as fast as possible. We are going to be using the same stats of our previous Kung Fu build, but instead of using the dry leaf arts, we are going to be using two heavy large clubs on plus 25 with the crack blade Ash of War and the heaviest armor or the best armor we have in our inventory with the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Millicent's Prosthesis, the Rodding Windsor Insignia and the Old Lord's Talisman. I need a Flask of Unrose Physic, the Stone Barb Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. With this quick build, we are going to be able to completely obliterate Renala. And in this character, I have my Scattered Tree Blessing on the level 5, so let's quickly begin with this. Okay guys, now we go crazy with her, basically. With some crazy attacks, we try to dodge as much as possible, but 
in our gaps, we, we just don't hesitate, we just go crazy. And we will endure a lot of attacks, so... This is going to happen, and here's our chance to completely obliterate her. And she's done, guys! I'm pretty sure she's done now. Come on! Let's go! I tell, I'm telling you guys! <laughs> At the beginning, it might seem like uh, you're not dealing that much damage, but if you manage to break her stance quickly, you will completely destroy her, bro. <laughs> That's insane, right, guys? Well, Scarlet Tree level 5, the previous Kung Fu build, and you will be able to destroy this girl in seconds. With that being said, you will be able to obtain her Elanala's Quick Blade in such an easy way. Let's go, baby. Hey there, man. Hey there, man. Nice. Let's go crazy this time, guys. Let's go crazy this time. Let's go crazy this time. I'm telling you guys, it's gonna happen. Let's go, baby. Easy. 32k damage, baby. 32k damage. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs>